Hello YouTube! I am Pinstar and this is Anno 1800 Getting Started Quick Tips. So today I'm going to run down some of my uh, tips, suggestions, and what have you to get your colony off the ground, um, taking you through both the farmer and the worker phases and getting your first artisan. Um, so without any further ado, let's Tip begin. Number one, for reasons of both efficiency and organization, you generally want to keep your city center and your industrial area in two separate distinct areas. Um, usually what I recommend is to take a, take a look at your island as, uh, as presented and locate uh, a clay pit. Uh, now, we got rather generous uh, donations of clay deposits here, so we kind of have our pick as to which one we want to saddle up to for our industrial area. I'm going to saddle up to this one and eventually this one. So we're going to say this part of the island is our industrial type area, and this part will be more our city center. Tip number two. My favorite uh, way of designing housing blocks here is the uh, good old-fashioned donut block. The uh, donut block is constructed with eight houses formed in a ring like this with a road going around their outsides. In the middle, we will put some greenery once we have some unlocked. The reasons for this are twofold. One, keeps things nice and organized uh, while still having pretty healthy housing density. And two, the risk of fire is actually not... Uh, not too bad. If you pack houses more densely without some open space near them, uh, they have an increased risk of fire. When getting your lumber industry built up, the in-game tutorial, if you've got it set to uh, more guidance, will instruct you to build one lumberjack's hut and one sawmill. This is a mistake. Not that you shouldn't build these two, but that you should only that that they're only instructing you to build one. My uh, optimal suggestion would be three. Your uh, wood production is so important that having it on a rather high volume is that important um, that you should have three of them because it will help fuel your growth quickly without uh, taking up too much of your workforce. Now, when placing your... Um, uh, uh, lumber mills, obviously you want them to say 100%. That being said, depending on the placements, if you have something like this where there's a timer, this is fine. It just tells you that you have to wait 3 minutes and 15 seconds for the trees to fully grow enough for it to be productive. That's okay. It's a one-time wait. Uh, so if you can get it in a nice place where you don't have to worry about it, great. What you don't want is you want you don't want something that is lower than 100%, because then its output will be harmed. You can have a little bit of, uh, of, of stuff on here, uh, suppressing the percentages, but too many tiles lost to other objects will uh, cause the uh, productivity to hurt. So Uno, also uh, don't overlap your uh, productions with each other too much. 100%, 100%, and 100%, boom. When placing your, produ your production buildings, there's a couple of things you want to keep in mind. It's okay for them to be a little bit far away from your places in of themselves, um, but you uh, want them in between the building that produces the raw good and the eventual small warehouse where they will be delivered. Because you don't want the raw goods going into the small warehouse and gumming them up before being extracted and brought to the place that refines them. So something like this, keeping them all on the same side away from the small warehouse is ideal. Don't forget that in the sandbox mode, your flagship can contain some starter goods uh, that can help get your colony going even faster. Um, so once you've spent your initial allotment of wood, go ahead and get your weapons and timber down here, um, as well as the ste steel beams. That way you can continue your colony's growth quickly. There could be a case to be made to grab a second island quickly, but the uh, jury's still out on that one. When building production buildings and their refineries, keep their um, keep in mind their, their relative speeds. 
For example, if we look at the Lumberjack's hut, it produces a uh, unit of wood every 15 seconds, and the sawmill will refine one every 15 seconds. Therefore, a one-to-one -one ratio is optimal and ideal, and perfectly fine. Uh, as you get to more advanced things, the ratio will be off a little bit. So keep that in mind and build accordingly. Did you know that your small trading post acts like a small warehouse? So to an extent, you can uh, build industries, production buildings, and whatnot near it, and it will serve as a collection point for your goods in the same way as that. So you don't need to spring for the extra 10 wood needed otherwise. The maximum throughput yeah, uh, is something to consider when uh, uh, organizing your industrial areas and keeping an eye on your small warehouses. What do I mean by this? Well, see, look what we got here. We've got two carts that are loading slash unloading their goods, and it takes time. Every cart that shows up that needs to either deliver or pick up a good will need to sit in line and take its time to load or unload its goods. Too many carts at once, and there's a backlog, and that slows your production down. Now, as you can see here, there are little glimpses and glimmers of a, of a backup here, but this isn't too bad. I found the the, the probably the most efficient uh, throughput ratio is four incoming sources to two ramps, or rather, one ramp can hold, can hold and can handle two incoming sources of goods overall. So in this case, we've got our four incoming sources of goods. We've got, um, we've got our, our um, uh, lumberjack hut going to the mill, therefore not gumming up the works here. See my earlier tip on that. So we've got three of these outputting three sets of goods to here. I have just added a, uh, a, a sheep farm and a clothing shop to the mix. Now we have four sources of incoming goods to this warehouse, and it is maxed out. As you can see, it's there, there, there are little tiny backups, but it does not sit idle. So you're getting pretty much your biggest bang for buck. We just got unlucky here with a double load up here. But generally speaking, this will keep things at a peak efficiency. Now, there's always said, to be said that you can uh, uh, upgrade the warehouse, but that's expensive. Especially in the early game, it's easier and cheaper to um, just build a new warehouse if you need to get more goods flowing into something. Did you know something? that the happiness of your workers, um, uh, when it comes to adjusting working conditions up and down, the happiness is shared across the entire class of workers. So, for example, if we were to, um, say, decrease the productivity tip, don't forget to put a, a fire uh, department down near your industrial area. Having one near your residential area by itself is not good enough. And waiting till a fire breaks out will cause it to delay uh, and letting your buildings burn. Reach the step stage of your game to uh, get uh, workers uh, an upgrade. Make sure you don't upgrade workers um, that would cause your farmers to go negative. You still need enough farmers to far run your farmer level stuff. Uh, also, start with the bricks before you try to get into meat. At the very beginning of your transition from uh, farmers to workers, your workers will never be more populous uh, than the 10 workers they convert into. So converting a single house of farmers, of 10 farmers, will turn them into 10 workers. But these workers will not grow on their own. They will remain at 10 until you provide sausages. That being said, once you provide sausages, they will grow on their own, allowing you to reap more workers without having to convert more houses. Know that the higher class of citizen uh, 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 person is, the more in taxes they pay you. This is very useful for keeping your bank balance positive. Take a look. As you can see here, we are getting uh, 240 from our farmers and 277 from our workers at the moment. But if we look at our actual statistics, we've got uh, 244 uh, farmers, but only 150 workers. So our workers, despite being uh, greatly outnumbered by the farmers, are giving us more income. The moral of the story to that is, if you've got an excess of a lower uh, stage of... Uh, of uh, citizen and you've got the uh, resources to upgrade them don't be shy about upgrading them unless you actually need them like i said just don't bring yourself into the negatives
Once you have your sausage factory down, don't be shy about hooking up and um, loading up another whole clay deposit. Just like by having triple lumber mills um, to get our wood income going nice and quick, uh, having double or even triple, if you're feeling cute, uh, clay deposits to get your clay uh, brick uh, income going an appreciable level to keep up would uh, certainly would make it a habit from time to time to check your one of your uh, thing one of your uh, uh, warehouses or your trading post and look at your goods more specifically the trend you see how um, you see how the trend here for my schnapps is stable as is with my Same clothing. Thing. That means we're about making things at the same rate that we are using them. They are, we are not making an excess, but we're generally keeping up with demand. As you can see, we used up a schnapps and then we immediately replaced it. Um, when you see them trending at stable, it may be time to produce more of that good before you grow any further. Because if you continue to grow with wild abandon, um, uh, looking to hook up more and more advanced goods, your basics will cause your, your uh, colony to death spiral, as suddenly every, there aren't enough shirts to go around, even though you're just getting the newer and shinier things for everybody. So don't let that trip you up. When you get um, the option for a newspaper, um, obviously if you ever have anything negative, you may want to consider swapping it out for something positive. That being said, even if you have something positive, sometimes you still may want to do a swap. The influence that you spend on a swap is refunded to you after the next newspaper edition. Um, and especially in the early game when you don't have any other real uses for your influence at the moment, you may want to give yourself a boost. Now as far as the edits go here, usually the minus 5% riot chance is something you can replace because it's not terribly helpful unless you're pushing your workers to the uh, uh, breaking point here. So that being said, I like consumerism. That 5% extra income is useful. As you wish, it'll be changed momentarily, of course. Uh, absolutely. Um, leaving the natural plus 5 happiness articles alone would certainly um, uh, be worth it as well. Censorship. Even if we don't necessarily need the money at the moment, you'll be happy you have it later. The first instance that you will encounter of uh, non-equal um, production timings is in the bread chain here. The grain farm produces grain, uh, a unit of grain once every minute. That's all well and dandy, but the flour mill per, um, will churn uh, flour in, grain into flour every 30 seconds followed by the bakery which can convert flour into bread only once a minute. So in this case the flour mill is the thing in question. Now there are a couple of ways you can approach this imbalance to have things work in your favor. One would be to have two uh, wheat fields and two bakeries to your one um, flour mill. That would have the chain producing at maximum capacity. An alternative would be to adjust the productivity level of the flour mill. Um, you could actually use this to get a little bit of a bonus to the happiness of your farmers. Now, unfortunately, since there are only 10 people employed in the farm, the bonus to all your overall farmers is probably gonna be kind of minimal, a plus one because that's only, the hap that's only making 10 workers um, happy over your others. That's another tip. The more workers affected by the increase or decrease of conditions of their workplace, the greater the overall effectiveness uh, or impact of that is on your workforce as a whole. An alternative here might be to um, leave this, uh, leave the um, flour mill at normal productivity, but start cracking the whip on the, gra on the grain farms and the bakery to make them produce faster. Either way, it's up to you. As your population grows, you will start to um, unlock soap. And now comes probably one of the more tricky decisions that you need to make. 
See, the problem with the soap production chain, um, once your population gets uh, large enough, your uh, workers are going to start demanding it as a basic need, and it will impact how, uh, how full they fill their, their residences is, is here. The problem with soap here is that um, the ladder buildings, the rendering works, and the soap factory each require four steel. You start the game with ten. That's great. But, unfortunately, the timings are imbalanced. Um, because tallow well, takes farmers, one minute, but soap only takes 30 seconds. No odds, as long as pay. Luckily, the pig farm can be built in duplicate because it only requires wood. So my recommendation for your soap chain is thus. My suggestion for the optimal uh, soap chain production is thus. Two pig farms, your rendering works cranked up to 50%. Yes, that's going to give you a little bit of a hit to the happiness of your workers, but it's worth it in this case. And then let your leave your soap makers alone. This by itself is not going to cause too much of a problem. That being said, whenever you crank a building up to higher productivity, make sure it is close to a fire station, as that the act of cranking it up will cause it to have a higher than average fire risk. However, being near a fire station will cause it to have a lower than normal fire risk. So you can the two factors can mitigate each other. And now you have a perfectly efficient soap production chain, which will allow your um, uh, uh, worker houses here to fill themselves up nicely. When getting ready to get started for steel, make sure you're building up your workforce greatly. You're going to need a lot of workers. I, uh, I would uh, jokingly argue that getting into steel production is the first boss of this game, if one were to think of it uh, as a more traditional game. 160 workers is what you will need to fully commit to a steel, uh, to a thrust into steel. <clears throat> you can get started with the earlier steps, um, but you're going to need 360 in total. So make sure you've got enough workers, and more importantly, make sure you've got enough underlying stuff for those workers. Remember to check your stuff uh, before you run short because you are going to uh, uh, be pushing your resources consumption to its breaking point. Once you're close to the 360 mark, go ahead and get your industry started. You obviously want to anchor everything by an iron deposit. That is where the magic happens. Charcoal kilns act like uh, for, uh, logging mills. In fact, they use the trees around them. So the same rules apply to them. Once your uh, forge has a, a, an output uh, of steel, go ahead and build your steelworks nearby. You have your steelworks, which operates on a tick of 45 seconds compared to the 30 seconds uh, from the forge, operate at peak efficiency. You will want to whip them about 33 eh, percent, 34 maybe. Um, the other thing that you can do to change your productivity is uh, lower your iron mine productivity by 50 percent. This will help offset some of the happiness penalty from both the rendering work and the steel mills. Once you've got your steel production up and running, the last hurdle, well there are two last hurdles. Um, uh, to getting your, um, to moving up to the artisan list, which is where our tip video will end. The first is, it Back is now time to start this. actually getting your ships into play. You may want to uh, consider uh, getting into the sail industry and getting them into, uh, into play here, but now you can, in good faith, start to explore. Uh, what, you're, what we're looking for is an uninhabited island that has the ability to grow hops. Your home island, by default, will not be able to grow hops. Uh, but we need to be able to grow hops in order to proceed economically. When you find a new unsettled island, you can see by the icons underneath its name what types of fertility it has. Here we have potato, hops, and red pepper. Perfect! Let us go fetch some supplies so that we may colonize this. In order to colonize a new island, what you'll want to do is get your ship near your harbor, click the transfer menu, 
Uh, grab at least 10 timber, although you're going to probably want to load up with as much as you can carry. Um, and also grab yourself at least 8 steel beams. I'll just grab the 10 because it's easier to click. Let's max out our um, timber here. Uh, as far as other goods to take, uh, I mean, we guess we could take bricks, but they're not strictly speaking needed. Um, then send your uh, ship near one of these beaches. It must be near a beach. One of these rocky outcroppings here will not allow you to colonize the island. It must be a beach. So either here or here. Once your ship is near the beach with the appropriate resource, a ghost of a trading post will appear. Just click on the ghost and click build trading post. I suppose expansion is always good. The settlement is now ours and we have constructed our, our trading post. We can then Flagship move the goods. Well, actually, the, moves autom the goods automatically move into there and start building our colony proper. Now we can start farms and start getting hops. Once you're ready to start moving goods from point A to point B, good idea to set up a trade route. So what we're going to be doing here is we're going to trade a route uh, between um, our hops world and our main world. I got that backwards. Our hops world to our main world. We will load hops. We will unload hops. And here we can use the return Amazing trip to thing. ferry stuff back. We could use uh, that to bring, say, bread or sausages or other some such goods over. Uh, so that we may keep this area uh, supplied. But for now, nothing. No, we don't need we don't need log logs. Just accept. Oh yeah. Also, don't forget to assign your ship. I wouldn't do this with our normally do this with our trade ship, uh, but I've been slacking on building that. So that, my friends, is are my tips for doing a. Uh, uh, getting your islands up and running. At this point, all we really got to do is hit the button to upgrade our workers to artisans. But that is for, uh, those are tips for another time. So if you guys like these tips and you want to see more like it, go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and leave me a comment, good, bad, or indifferent. Your feedback is always welcome. So until next time, this has been Pinstar, signing out. See ya!